Hi, in this video, we're going to explore the design of a legendary aircraft from aviation history and apply modern technology to it. We will examine if the synergy between an airframe from the golden age of aerodynamics and the cutting edge modern propulsion technology is the key to propelling battery powered aircraft to longer distances. On this channel, Electric Aviation, we bring for you all the latest developments from the world of sustainable air travel subscribe to get all our updates. One category of aircraft in electric aviation that has been overshadowed by the rise of EVTOL is the EASTOL or the electric short takeoff and landing aircraft. In the pursuit for the more appealing EVTOL designs, we have overlooked the tremendous potential of the EASTOL and the USTOL, which is the ultra short takeoff and landing aircraft. A well-designed stall aircraft can land in an area that is smaller than the length of a football field. Though there have been tall claims that some of the new e-stall concepts can even land on small rooftop vertipodes. Even if we dismiss these ambitious claims, the utility of these aircrafts isn't diminished. There are plenty of spaces in built-up areas where these aircraft can be used for urban air mobility. For example, brownfield lands abandoned elevated railway lines or embankments can be converted into airstrips. The London City Airport is a case in point. The wide open space over the river is ideal for approach and takeoff. Floating landing strips on shallow water bodies can be installed without much infrastructure cost. One has to remember that while designing an eVTOL, we have to support both the diametrically opposite flying conditions, that is hover and cruise. And depending upon the mission requirement, we either optimize the aircraft for hover or for cruise. This means that if we optimize for one condition, we get a suboptimal solution for the other. For the eStall aircraft, the choice is not that dichotomous. While landing performance improvement can result in concessions in cruise mode, it's easier to find a sweet spot that is close to optimal performance in both modes for an eStall aircraft. At present, there are very few companies that are developing eStall. The two companies that are more prominent are Airflow and Electra Aero. On the other hand, there are dozens of companies working towards an eVTOL aircraft. These not only include startups like Vertical Aerospace, Lilium, and Joby Aviation, but also established aerospace companies like Embraer and Airbus. The Achilles heel of the electric aircraft at present is the battery energy density. The power-hungry eVTOLs using existing batteries can achieve a range of 100 to 150 miles for 500 kilograms of payload capacity. On the other hand, eStalls can achieve ranges of 200 to 250 miles for the same payload capacity. This makes eStall ideal for middle mile logistics and regional passenger transport. It should be understood though that simply replacing a fuel engine in an aircraft with an equivalent capability electric motor and placing the batteries in the fuel tank isn't the best way to use electric propulsion technology. This is mainly because we miss out on distributed propulsion, which is far more efficient means of powering an aircraft. And with electrified propulsive systems, we can achieve that easily. NASA showed that by using distributed propulsion, the energy consumption can be reduced to a third as it allows us to achieve higher lift with a smaller wing area. Further efficiency gains can be made by wingtip vortex elimination and boundary layer ingestion. Having said that, there are some aircraft that lend themselves well for conversion to electric propulsion. One such aircraft is the Antonov AN2. It is the most popular multi-role workhorse biplane of the 20th century. Such has been the success of this aircraft that it is still being produced, although in limited numbers, despite being in its ninth decade of service. It was first produced in the late 1940s. It is only second to Cessna 172 in terms of units made. But in terms of its utility and application, this aircraft is second to none. This 12-seater 1500 kg payload capacity plane has been used for passenger and military personnel transport, scientific research, as flying ambulance, for crop dusting, water bombing for forest firefighting, and also as seaplane when attached with floats. Since its inception, it has spawned over three dozen variants. 
the aircraft's remarkable durability, high lifting power, and ability to take off and land from poor runways has given it a long service life. And this brings us to the question, would the AN2 be a good contender for conversion to e-stall? The answer is yes. So let's get into why and how. The AN2 already has a very strong short takeoff and landing performance. It can fly at very low speeds. Pilots have been known to fly the plane under full control at just 30 miles per hour. In fact, there has been no stall speed listed for the AN2 in the operator's handbook. This is because even with the engine out, the aircraft does not go into a stall spin and descends down at the same speed as a paratrooper. Although at this descent rate, the landing gear gets damaged, but the personnel on board remain safe. It has leading edge slats that get extended automatically because of elastic rubber springs when the aircraft speed drops below 40 miles per hour. This enhances the lift at low speeds. The aircraft also has flaps on all four wings. Based on the astounding flight characteristics, the Siberian Research Institute of Aviation, or SIBNIA for short, recently modified the AN2 and created two separate iterations of it. The goal was to modernize the AN2 with new technology. In the first variant, called the TVS2 DTS, they changed the body from metal and fabric construction to complete composite. This resulted in a more sleek and lighter body. The other significant change was removing the struts and the bracing wires between the wings and changing the bi-wing into an annular wing. These changes resulted in very notable improvements to the aircraft's already stellar performance parameters. The maximum range increased from 1200 kilometers to 1300 kilometers, while the max payload capacity increased from 1500 kilograms to 3000 kilograms. In the second Sibnia variant, namely the TVS 2MS, the airframe was kept the same, but eight additional electric pod motors were attached to the lower wing, four on each side. The pods on the wings had small foldable propellers. This aircraft in 2021 stunned the crowd at the Russian air show when it took off within six seconds and with the takeoff distance of just 60 meters. The pod propellers are used only during the takeoff and fall back during the cruise when they aren't required. The use of distributed electric propulsion has given the legendary AN2 a new lease of life. The credit for the application of small pod motors for enhancing takeoff and landing goes to NASA and the LeapTech program. They were first to demonstrate how multiple small propellers across the wing can significantly increase the lift. You can see the data from the LeapTech study in this chart. In NASA's study, there were nine small propellers attached across the span of the wing. As can be seen from the chart, the props increase the coefficient of lift values to over five across the majority of the wingspan. We call this augmented lift coefficient as it is aided by air blown over the wing. In comparison, the normal lift coefficient value doesn't go above 1.2 for most airfoils. This means that we can achieve more than four times the lift with distributed propulsion. Another way to look at it is that by using small propellers, we don't need a large wing for takeoff. Therefore, we can reduce the wing area significantly and make high aspect ratio wing. This will give us the same takeoff performance as a comparable aircraft, but much better cruise efficiency. In fact, by doing this, the total energy of the flight can be reduced by threefold. And this is the key for battery electric planes. Another wing configuration that can be used by e stall companies is the Custer channel wing. Willard Custer developed a design incorporating a semi-circular channel or a half barrel shape in which an engine was to be fitted in order to draw air over the wing. Again, the principle was to create synergy between the wing and the propeller. The maximizing of airflow over the wing enhances the lift. It has been reported that with Custer channel wings, the aircraft can fly as low as 22 miles per hour and have a ground roll of just 30 meters. Unfortunately, the channel wing configuration, despite its apparent advantages, never made it to the mainstream because of patents that prevented the permeation of this technology. The last aircraft to fly the Custer channel wings was the CCW-5. 
It made developmental flights during the 1960s and 1970s, but no production orders were obtained. It is much easier to use the electric motors with Custer channel wings than it is to use combustion engines. The use of this wing could be a way forward for the e stall aircraft. In recent times, we have seen the certification of Pipistrel Valis Electro. This fixed-wing aircraft became the first battery-powered electric aircraft to receive a type certificate. The logical step would be to move into e stall and EU stall rather than pursuing EV tolls. This is because the certification for the latter is much more difficult to achieve. The funding and investment, unfortunately, is much more skewed towards EV toll because of their potential application in urban air mobility. Even though e stall can be used for the same purpose much more effectively, albeit with a slightly bigger footprint. So, which technology do you think should be given more preference, EV toll or e stall? Do you think that the electrification of the AN2 or similar biplane design is the way to go? Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do consider giving it a like. Thank you for your attention.